Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Here at Locust Motorworks, we love covering all things John Deere, as well as farming related topics. With harvest in full swing, I thought it'd be a cool video to go back and look at the history of some early John Deere combines and see where it all started. In this tractor research and history video, we're going to be covering early John Deere combines. Everything from 1928 up until the 40s. We'll be covering the famous ones, such as the number 2, as well as the 12A. We will also dive in and check out some of the more unknown ones and the more rare combines. This will be the first video in this series as we'll be covering harvesters all the way up to present day, so stay tuned. But before we get started, if you don't mind clicking subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. Anyways, let's go. The first combine invented came out of Kalamazoo, Michigan in the 1830s, invented by two guys, Hiram Moore and John Haskell. These combines were big in size and very rudimentary for what we know today. Many of these combines were pulled by teams of horses and oxes. By 1880, the combine had slowly evolved into now having steam engines on it. Many farmers would fork straw from the rear of the separator into the firebox to keep the fire rolling. One thing that was very popular in these days was threshing machines. These threshing machines would separate stalks and husk from clean grain and be a big time upgrade from doing it by hand. The main drawback to these threshing machines was that they weren't very mobile and you had to bring the grain to the machine. After the turn of the century, a big focus would be put on pull type combines and companies would begin designing. These combines would be pulled by tractor but would have their own power unit to run the threshing mechanisms. You'd see a big boost in popularity on these pull type combines after World War I as more farmers wanted to cover more acres. And this is where John Deere would enter the combine scene in 1926. Charles Wyman, John Deere's president, wanted to create a combine that was set up perfect for Midwestern farmers. With many combines on the market being too big and too costly to operate, John Deere wanted to create something a little smaller and more economical for the farmer. This move would be opposed by some board members, but in the end $24,000 was set aside to start developing this new combine. Many of the tests and experiments were conducted in Kansas, the leading state buying new combines at the time. Now up to this point, John Deere had been building grain binders as well as rakes and mowers to help with harvest, but never produced its own combine. The first combine that would roll out the door would be the John Deere No. 2. There would be 40 of these built in 1927. This combine was equipped with a 35 horse engine as well as a 12 foot or a 16 foot platform. It would feature a spike tooth threshing cylinder that was 24 inches wide as well as a separator that was 40 inches wide and had a grain tank of 65 bushels. To run this combine, it would require two people, one to steer the pilot wheel on the combine as well as one to pull it and drive the tractor. John Deere would rate this combine at being able to cut and thresh 25 to 40 acres of grain per day. The number two would be quickly upgraded and just a year later, John Deere would release the number one combine. With the release of the number one combine in 1928, you'd also see the number two get more widely produced. One drawback that farmers found with the number two was it being too big and bulky for the John Deere D to pull in adverse conditions. This combine would be slightly smaller as well as a little bit lighter and it'd become the favorite for farmers looking to purchase new combines. One notable change from the number two to the number one is the grain tank size. The number one only could carry 40 bushels of grain. As the late 20s wore on, John Deere would have four models of combines available for purchase. These would be the number 1, 2, 3, and 5, all being this pull type variant. They would make the number 5 even a little bit smaller yet, reducing the horsepower to a 25 horse Hercules engine, as well as decreasing the grain tank size to 35 bushels. In 1932, John Deere would release the number 17 combine. This combine would target the bigger grain farmers. The number 17 would feature 65 bushel capacity as well as a 12 and 16 foot head. This unit would stay in production all the way up until 1948. Also released in 32 was the number 7 combine. This would be the first time Deere offered the option for a PTO powered combine. However, it would also have the option for an engine mounted unit. But now back to the Dirty 30s and the continuation of the John Deere combine. By 1934, the John Deere Harvester Works was doing good and they would increase the size of their building in East Moline to 1.16 million square feet. This would span nearly 60 acres and feature over 12,000 feet of underground tunnels. 34 would also see the release of the number 5A combine 
This was an upgraded version of the original number 5 and would pair perfect with John Deere's newly released Unstyled A. This number 5A would feature a 4 cylinder Hercules engine as well as the option for a 6 cylinder in tough conditions and would feature a larger grain tank of 50 bushels. With the onset of the Great Depression, you'd see John Deere acquire the Caterpillar harvesting line. Previous to this, Caterpillar had tried to sell their harvesting line to Deere for $1.2 million. Deere would decline this offer, saying it was too much money at the time. They would end up striking a marketing deal at which John Deere would acquire the Caterpillar line of harvesters. Now at the time, John Deere didn't have a hillside combine, but through this deal, John Deere would get one. This would be a good move for Deere, and it would help propel them into being one of the industry standards of combines. Some of the backstory on this marketing deal was Caterpillar wanted to get more into the industrial tractor side. Caterpillar had the track market down good, and John Deere had tractors that were able to be converted for industrial use. They would negotiate a deal on industrial tractors, and Caterpillar would get out of a business that it didn't want to be in. Caterpillar would get out of the harvesting business. They'd turn over all their drawings, jigs, and dyes to Deere, allowing them to use and improve the patents that they'd had in the past. And in this deal, John Deere would acquire the number 36 combine. Now this would have hillside capabilities as well as three different platforms. This would give operators the availability to harvest grain at up to a 50% grade. Cat would also offer to supply John Deere with engines, but John Deere would turn this down and continue to use the Hercules supplied engine. 1936 would also see the release of the number 6 John Deere Combine. This combine would be set up mainly for smaller farmers that wanted to run their combine with a two plow tractor. But sales would not go according to plan and John Deere would have to rethink their building of a small combine. They wanted a machine that could be pulled by an H or a B John Deere. And that would bring us the number 10. However, these combines are very rare and would be built for only one year. Following that up, they'd do the 10A, which would also be built for only one year. You'd see John Deere go on to update and improve the combines through the late 30s, as well as adding some features that we can spot on today's combine, including the auger header. This would allow for more grain to be collected and processed faster, and would be made available on the 1939 number 9 combine. This number 9 would start to get more of a look of a combine that we know today. You can start to see the look of the clean grain elevators going up from the threshing unit and would feature a rasp bar design compared to the spike tooths that they were using previously. One of the most famous John Deere pole type combines is going to be the number 12A. But to get to the 12A, it was preceded by the number 11 and the number 12. But both of these combines have a lot of the same features. This meant the crop didn't have to change directions while going through the combine. It would be put in, cut, separated, and out the back. With the crops not having to turn directions while going through the combine, this prevented a lot of clogs from happening. Also, with having the straw travel in a straight direction, this produced a lot cleaner grain with less trash. The number 12 combine could be pulled with a John Deere B and made light work of wheat and oats. The most popular and best selling combine in the 1940s was the John Deere 12A. With John Deere upgrading the Model A row crop tractor in the mid 40s, it paired up perfect with this 12A combine. And to this day, you can still see these old style 12A pull type combines at farm shows and also working 70 years later. Now for a quick recap on these combines we've covered so far, as they're easy to get confused with the number system and how many John Deere produced in such a little amount of time. These are the production years of what I consider the early John Deere combines. And as you can see, there's a lot of overlapping years and a lot to keep straight. You'd see the most changes on the number 7 and number 9 in the 30s, working its way up to the number 12. To follow that up, we have some overlapping years, but these are the combines that I feel are more modern styled. Having the availability for the side hill feature, as well as increased grain tank size. In the next episode, we're going to be finishing up the pull types, as well as getting into some of our first self-propelled John Deere combines. So I'm curious if you've had any experience running one of these old style combines. If so, let me know down in the comments. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for part 1 of John Deere combines. We'll see you in part 2.